Welcome to the Illinois Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. Thank you so much for joining us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off, so our panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of many different sessions happening, so please be sure to sign up for additional sessions. And this presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week at strivescan.com backslash Illinois. And with that, I will turn it over to our first presenter, and that is Illinois State University. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. My name is Morgan Johnson, and I'm one of the transfer admissions counselors with Illinois State University. Hi, everyone. My name is Samantha Miranda. I'm the Assistant Director of Transfer Recruitment at Illinois State, and we're happy to be with you here tonight. To start off to learn just a little bit about Illinois State, we're made up of about 21,000 students and about 18,000 of those students are our undergraduate students. So you really are the main focus here with us on campus. We also do have a pretty diverse population here with 47 states represented and 74 countries represented on campus and about three in every 10 students are coming from diverse backgrounds. In regards to our transfer population, about one in three students are transfer students, so you definitely aren't going to be alone when you're coming through in that process. And we're also very proud because 45% of our graduating Redbirds are transfer students, so you're getting here and you're working through your program in a pretty timely manner uh, and graduating pretty quickly as well. We also do have a pretty diverse transfer community. We have students, uh, most of our students are coming from a community college, about 81%, but we are able to help students coming from no matter where, so a four year out of state, wherever it is, we are able to help. We do have about 32% of our students coming in with an associate's degree, it's definitely not required. Being a first generation college student myself, um, it's also nice to know that there are tons of resources on campus for first generation students, as about a quarter of our new transfer students are first generation as well. One of the ways that we are able to have such a large transfer population on campus is because we're such a transfer friendly institution. The Phi Theta Kappa Honor Society has named us to their transfer honor roll for the past six years. We're the only public institution in the state of Illinois that has been named to their honor roll since it has started. Some of the resources that we offer that make us so transfer friendly are listed on the screen below. We have transfer credit guides that help show how any courses from an Illinois community college are gonna transfer into Illinois State. We provide major course recommendations that are laying out exactly what courses to take at your community college so you know how you're gonna transfer into Illinois State and be successful. And it's also gonna make sure that you're staying on track to graduate on time with us. And then if you wanna guarantee your admission into ISU, we offer our Redbird Promise Guaranteed Admission Program. That is offered between Illinois State and all 48 of the Illinois Community Colleges. As long as you plan to get your Associates in Science or Associates in Arts, and complete it with at least a 2.4 GPA, we can guarantee admission into Illinois State up to four years prior to actually transferring. Some of the reasons students decide to transfer in, into Illinois State is because we are in the top 10% of the nation among public institution when it, when it comes to our retention rate, graduation rate, and our loan default rate. We have a about 89% retention rate for our transfer students. We're able to provide them with the academic, the social, and the financial resources that they need that allow them to return each year. Our graduation rate is actually in the top 5% of the nation. Like I mentioned earlier, about 45% of our class, our graduating class are transfer students. Um, so again, you're working through that pretty quickly. And we also provide a lot of resources while you're a student here on campus to make sure you're going to be successful after graduating. And that's what helps our students gain employment after graduation and help us keep a very low loan default rate as well. I'll turn it over now to Sam to talk about our cost. Yes, um, here is a breakdown of a full year at Illinois State uh, direct costs for on campus versus off campus. Um, tuition and fees based off of 30 credit hours, housing and meals if you're living on campus and have the unlimited meal plan. This is the direct billable cost that you could see for a full year. Now to help with that cost, we do have transfer scholarships. We have many categories of transfer scholarships, but our automatic transfer scholarship is highlighted here. As long as you earn at least 24 credit hours, maintain a minimum of 3.5 GPA, and apply in our preferred filing period, you will be guaranteed our transfer student scholarship. 
Now, when is our preferred filing period? Our application preferred filing periods are here on the left. Um, the best times to apply are, are in these windows for orientation purposes, financial aid purposes, and for major admission purposes. We want you to apply in these timeframes. Our spring application will be opening shortly here on April 1st. To apply, you'll go to our website. There is a $50 application fee, and we require all official transcripts as part of the application process. What we're looking at for admission is major based. On the bottom right here, you can see that we have a transfer major admission guide that breaks down every single one of our major admission requirements. And from that, we're going to be looking at your GPA, cumulative of GPA, courses you've completed. And if you submit a personal statement, we'll be reviewing that as well in our admission review. With that, um, no, uh, we would love to have you come to campus. We have transfer specific uh, tours every Friday and every Saturday, transfer campus visits at 1130 in person. And then of course we have online tour options and self-guided tour options in person. And then Morgan and I are easily accessible. We're part of a three-person transfer team at Illinois State that you can get a hold of us by emailing admissions at illinoisstate.edu. And we'll be here to answer any questions you have. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Our next presenter is Purdue University Northwest. Awesome. Well, hello, everybody. So good to see you guys. Um, just want to talk a little bit, of course, about who we are. Let me get my screen to share real quick. Um, here we go. OK, awesome, awesome, awesome. So Purdue University Northwest is a um, regional university within the Purdue University system. We are unique in that we actually have two campuses ourselves, one that is in Westville, Indiana, and one that is in Hammond, Indiana, which is just you know 30 minutes or so from uh, Chicago. So uh, very much um, close, very accessible, very um, easy to get to from where you're at, as well as having a nice uh, partnership within the region of Northwest Indiana for uh, businesses, internships, and the like. Um, we have uh, over 70 areas of study uh, for students to uh, come in and study for everything from our colleges of business and engineering and sciences and nursing, technology, uh, humanities, education, um, and the like. And so um, with about 10,000 students on campus, there is uh, kind of a sweet middle uh, zone of, of students for there to be a lot happening while at the same time having the one-on-one -on -one focus. With a 12 to one student to faculty ratio, we have um, access for our students to meet with their professors in the classroom to ask questions and have the um, time to, to get answered. We also have um, classroom, or I'm sorry, office hours for professors that are accessible for students. Um, students from all over the U.S. as well as around the world come to uh, attend Purdue Northwest um, and a healthy alumni base to make sure that um, careers straight from our university as well as partnerships and mentoring um, happen, uh, even set up before graduation. Talked a little bit about each of our colleges. Um, we have our College of Business, um, where we have, you know, like I said, all of the accounting and, and hospitality tours and management type programs. Uh, that's where students, you know, have gone to graduate and work for Pepsi and, and Hilton and Disney and, and the like. Um, we also have our College of Engineering and Sciences, uh, where, where all of our programs are ABET accredited, as well as ranked by US News and World Report. Um, and, and students have gone on to work for Arthur Middle, NASA, different national parks and organizations for research and collaboration and things of that nature. Um, we also have our College of Humanities, Education and Social Sciences, where there's lots of research happening, as well as our own conference that we host on campus, uh, where students have gone to work for GE, all kinds of different um, uh, like ESPN, TV shows, radio stations, things of the like. We have our College of Nursing, which is ASEN accredited, as well as one of 50 NLN uh, Centers of Nursing Ed Excellence in Higher Education. Uh, our online programs are also um, ranked by US News and World Report. Um, and we've got partners and graduates working all over Chicagoland area, um, as well as Northwest Indiana. Uh, our College of Technology, um, also ABET accredited. Um, we've been uh, sponsored and in, in, uh, we've got four eyes scholarships uh, sponsored by the um, uh, Department of Defense uh, for students to come on in. Uh, and those students have gone on to work for Apple, um, Nipsco, all kinds of tech companies. Now, we also have an honors college for students who are high achieving and would like to be around like-minded students where there's an uh, encouragement to collaborate and uh, to 
say, hey, well, I'm studying this and you're studying something very different, but, but where's the crossover and how can we begin to make um, new things happen and, and new collaboration ideas stirred into those sectors? Um, we believe that every student that we admit can be successful with us. And uh, we see that within our uh, graduation rates for our transfer students. And one of the ways that we do that is by having uh, free resources for all of them to ensure that they are uh, on track to, to graduate and that there's no barriers there, right? So everything from starting right off, you know, partnering with TRIO programs and our educational opportunities, ensuring that if, you know, a student is feeling overwhelmed, we've got our counseling center available to walk through and, and talk through some things. And we've got our career center, which is there to help build resumes and do mock interviews and all of those types of things, as well as helping you get internships that you might need or um, you know, helping you to get connected with businesses before you graduate. So that way you already have that set up for yourself. Um, we do offer housing available on campus, um, apartment style. So you're getting your very own bedroom uh, for only $5,700 per year. Uh, you get to have that. If you've got any friends who are coming or are already here with us, you are welcome to put their name on the application and we can get you guys uh, connected in that way. Um, and uh, we, we also have 16 different um, athletic teams, as you can see uh, listed on this, on this slide here. Um, very proud of our, our newest one, which is our uh, eSports team for both men and women's. And um, so come on out, support the pride, be a part of all that's going on there. Uh, our tuition is uh, just under $8,000 for in-state residents and uh, about $11,500 for an entire year for anyone out of state. So if you're in Illinois, you're welcome to come on over for um, this super affordable tuition price. Um, we do offer scholarships that's automatically reviewed for transfer students coming on uh, in. Um, and we talked a little bit about the eSports team. Uh, very proud of our brand new bioscience innovation building for our nursing and biological sciences students, as well as our new uh, student design um, studio for, for engineering and collaborating that way. Here's my contact information. I'll make sure to put it in the chat for anybody who would like to, to see that. Um, and thank you guys so much. I thought Layla was going to come back, but I don't think that she is. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. My name is Eric Castor, and I'm the Assistant Director for Transfer Admissions at the College for Creative Studies. And uh, I hope uh, to share with you today some uh, good information about the program, but also I want to review our website uh, so that you know how to navigate it, uh, perhaps when you are ready to apply. So a little bit about CCS. Uh, we were founded in Detroit in 1906 as the Society of Arts and Crafts. Uh, we've been teaching art and design now for over 100 years. Some of the things that set us apart is our small size uh, and our setting in Midtown Detroit, uh, outstanding facilities, the breadth of our majors and our sponsored projects, which are essentially on-campus internships. Uh, as well as our connections to creative industry and uh, organizations and entrepreneurs. So why, why CCS? Well, CCS is a private, not-for-profit, fully accredited college. Uh, we offer a Bachelor of Fine Arts degree in 11 undergraduate majors and a teaching certification in art education. We are nationally accredited with the National Association of Schools of Art and Design and the Higher Learning Commission, but we are also a member school of ACAD, uh, Association for Independent College of Art and Design, uh, which means that we not only meet curricular standards, but we have a moral obligation to help students find fit in a program that is right for you based on your career goals. In addition to our BFA degrees, we have 20 minors and a concentration in entrepreneurial studies. And we offer a master of fine arts degrees in four programs, color materials, interaction design, systems design thinking, and transportation design. As you can see, we have majors in advertising design, art practice, which was formerly fine arts, 
communication design, which many of you know may know as graphic design. Uh, we have an umbrella of programs under the craft and material studies uh, that include ceramics, fiber and textiles, furniture, glass, metal smithing and jewelry. Under the umbrella of entertainment arts, we have animation, concept design, digital film and game design. And we also have fashion accessories design, illustration, interior design, photography, product design, and transportation design. We enroll approximately 1,400 students uh, from 34 states and 27 countries. And we have a diverse student body, in fact, uh, with the student faculty, faculty ratio of approximately 11 to 1. Uh, with class sizes never exceeding about 21. So we don't do large lecture classes here. This is a big difference between us and many larger programs. In addition to attracting a diverse student body, we strive to make our campus an equitable, welcoming, and inclusive environment for everyone. CCS uh, has a number of accolades. We were named as one of the top three design schools in the United States by LinkedIn. And this is significant because it is based on raw data that LinkedIn collects uh, in regards to alumni where they graduated from and their current positions working in the field. Uh, CCS was also named best value school by both Payscale and Money Magazine. And we have won a Women's Choice Award for America's Best Colleges. Uh, we are also recognized as one of America's best architecture and design schools by design intelligence. And of course, because you are transfers, we also are a Phi Theta Kappa honor roll school uh, recognized for being transfer friendly institution. And we also have scholarships for high achieving uh, students. Generally, these are the Phi Theta Kappa students. Our alumni, uh, have careers at companies and galleries, museums and studios, all where they want to work. Uh, our alumni network is very strong and our excellent internships and recruitment events are a testament to that. The internship program allows qualified students to earn academic credit while gaining firsthand experience in their chosen fields. Not only do these students work alongside industry professionals in a real world setting, but also earn academic credit. Uh, make money, so these are paid internships, gain confidence in your ability to begin building professional networks. And here's just a sample of some of those employers that have participated in our internship program. So next, uh, I wanna share with you alumni success. I'm gonna show you also where you can find more alumni stories on our website. Uh, but this is just an example of just one of our faculty, our alumni rather, actually, who is a faculty member and the department chair for our concept design program. Uh, there are only six Batmobiles in the history of film, and CCS alums designed two of them. Uh, creative concept artist and designer Tim Flattery, who again is also the department chair for entertainment arts at CCS, has worked with leading film directors such as Steven Spielberg, Tim Burton, and has worked on over 40 films in almost 30 years. He supervised full-size construction of the Batmobile in Batman Forever, the Fantastic Car for the Fantastic Four, Rise of the Silver Surfer, and his film credits include Men in Black 1 and 2, Hunger Games, Tomorrowland, Pirates of the Caribbean, Captain America, Winter Soldier, uh, and more. So now I wanna take you To our website. Not our website. Well, it looks like that is all the time I have. So um, I would encourage anyone, I did put my contact information in the chat box. Uh, if you are interested in the College for Creative Studies, uh, please, please uh, look me up and I'd like to take you to the website personally. Thank you so much. Our next presenter is Flashpoint Chicago.
There I am. Uh, oh, if we could just have who's ever sharing now. That I'm able to get in. Beautiful. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Hi, all. Um, so my name is Kit Rivers. I am the Community Relations Manager at Flashpoint Chicago. We are a campus of uh, Columbia College Hollywood. Um, anyway, let's get going and talk about us. We have in our short, limited time. We are a digital media arts college. Um, so we've been around, you know, we have two campuses. First, I always like to explain that. We have our Chicago-based campus, um, which we share space with Roosevelt University in downtown Chicago. That's our Flashpoint campus, most pertinent to most people here. But we do have another campus, our sister campus, um, called Columbia College Hollywood that is out in the Los Angeles area. Both of these campuses operate as one unit. There are opportunities to take classes um, virtually in this world and in a normal world, um, also study abroad opportunities across campuses for the students, which is really cool. Um, we've been around as a one big institution for over 70 years. Um, we are regionally credited not-for-profit private university or private college. Um, so we're accredited by WASC, which is the Western Association of Schools and Colleges. Um, but what we, I mean by Digital Media Arts College, I like to always explain, is we're hyper-specialized. We don't have 80 majors, you know, we don't have all these different things. We are focused in creating digital media art industry experts. So um, we have four majors and four majors only, cinema, graphic design and interactive media, animation and visual effects, and recording arts. And recording arts is actually specific to um, just our Chicago campus, which is exciting for you all. Um, you'll see there's a, you know, amount of areas that you focus in within within those majors. Um, you can focus in things like acting, cinematography, directing, editing, so on and so forth. Um, beautiful. We are very, very small. Both of our campuses are quite small. Our Chicago-based campus has about um, 450 to 500 students. So your ratio uh, to student to teacher is about eight to one, um, which really sort of gives uh, teachers a real luxury uh, to work one-on-one -on -one with their students, as well as bring them into their projects uh, and the things that they're working on. Our classrooms and our classroom settings um, are quite literally not classrooms. Um, so, you know, we don't really do traditional lecture halls or I talk, you listen model. Um, our classrooms are the sound stages. They are the editing labs. They are the motion capture lab, the recording booths, um, you know, the sound booth, whatever it may be. Uh, the idea being that we want our students to constantly be doing hands-on work and adding material to their portfolio. Right, there's a real catch-22 in this industry where you have to have done work to get work. So it's really important to us that we're giving those students the opportunity as a part of their curriculum. Um, and this kind of just dives a little bit further into that aspect. These sort of three pillars here that you see here are how we operate and how we drive our students. So one, we are industry immersed. That means we work very closely with real companies, real clients. They help us write our curriculum. They sit on our board. They offer opportunities to our students. Um, the other aspect is that all of our faculty and teachers are still active members of the industry as well. So they are still creating pilots or screenplays or doing freelance design work, whatever it may be. So again, when we look back at that small student to teacher ratio, that really allows you a lot of access to some employer uh, opportunities. Um, secondly, we're learned by doing. So we talked a bit about that a little bit, but again, you're very rarely gonna be doing multiple choice, you know, kind of stuff, quizzes. It's very much going to be, here's the semester, here's the piece of content that needs to be created. Let's go out and create it. And that's how we're gonna learn. Um, and then lastly, we're really personalized. All that means is it goes back to our size. Um, you know, you're gonna work very, very closely, not only with your teachers and faculty to build out your um, specialized resume and portfolio, um, but you're also gonna work very, very closely with career services. And I'll talk about that in a second. Um, I'll talk about this directly this next second right here. Um, so we have a very special program in addition to our curriculum that we always like to make sure our students know about, particularly transfer students, and that is the Career Pathways program. So this is a program that goes, you know, hand in hand with your curriculum. You are working directly with a career counselor. This is not, you know, some adjunct office that sits at the edge of campus that you visit your senior year. Um, the idea is that you're going to work um, through them on these 20 essential career skills, things like your elevator pitch, strategic networking, leadership, um, how to build your resume, how to build your portfolio. The idea being, it's very, very important for us that you not just learn the creative skill set, right? How to be a filmmaker, how to be a graphic designer. It's important that you also understand how to operate and navigate the industry. Um, because 
you know, it would be misleading to say that this industry is 100% about your talent and only your talent, right? A big part of it is going to be some of those industry connections and those opportunities that you get and what your alumni network opportunities are. And so that's why we design career pathways um, to go hand in hand with our curriculum. Um, really quickly, I'm just trying to hit the highlights here for our transfer students. Um, we do have a lot of scholarship opportunities. Um, I should say about over 30% of our campus is transfer students, so there is a loving community of students that come in. And we have a lot of opportunities, particularly for transfer students. If you've already been doing some creative work, we have our Creator, Creative Contributor Award. Um, and this is a portfolio-based scholarship based on work that you've done in the past. We have a variety of academic uh, achievement grants based on your grades and your transcripts. We have our own internal opportunity and need-based grants. Um, we have the presidential uh, scholarship, which is based on both your creative and your academic um, skill sets and background. And then, of course, we also uh, offer the Yellow Ribbon Award, which is going to cover anything that the GI Bill does not for any of our veterans. Um, these scholarships are available to transfer students as well. Again, uh, most likely you're going to have a lot of access to that creative contributor uh, award, the early decision, of course, as far as our high school graduates. Um, beautiful. And then our application process. So for those of you um, that might be considered transferring, about 75% of your gen ed credits are going to be able to transfer if you have a C or above. Um, if you are currently taking digital specific courses, film specific courses, graphic design, whatever it may be, we have to look at those on a case by case basis. Um, but Otherwise, this is your checklist. There's a $50 application fee. However, there are a number of ways and events that you can attend to get that waived. Um, we're going to want to see your official transcripts from high school and from college. And um, if you'd like, you can add your test scores, but they are not required. And if you'd like, you can add two letters of recommendation, but again, not required. Uh, but there's a lot more to learn. Uh, I put up uh, a link in the chat earlier with all of my information. That's going to be a way to connect with us if you want to learn more questions, if you want to learn more questions, if you want to ask more questions, uh, and you can scan this QR code right here. But that is my time, and thank you so much, guys. Please reach out if you've got any questions. Thank you so much, everyone. We have a little extra time, so if I could ask everyone to turn their cameras back on, we're just going to do a little round robin Q and A here. Uh, and the first question to you all is, what advice would you give someone going through the transfer process? And we'll start uh, with Illinois State University. Thank you. That's a really great question. I would say a great piece of advice when you're going into any college process, not just the transfer process, but uh, definitely helps when you're transferring is just to start the entire process early, um, starting, you know, what major you're thinking about, where you're thinking about transferring to when you're starting at your first institution, because uh, that's going to help just for a smooth transition throughout the entire process. Uh, Purdue. Yeah. Okay. I was sorry. I wasn't sure if both reps were going to say something. I didn't want to like be all rude, but I would say um, probably kind of piggybacking off of uh, what Morgan said is uh, starting with the end in mind as much as you know and being able to work backwards, right? So in addition to not only knowing as soon as possible where you might want to be interested in, then saying, okay, like what is the end goal? Is end goal grad school? Okay, well then, then how do you get to that and what's necessary for that? And then for the bachelor's and then, you know, should you start an associate level, whatever the case may be. So um, that's what I would say. And then just know that like, we literally get paid to help. So like reach out to the universities um, and, and, and allow us to use our expertise to, to, to guide you and don't feel the pressure of anything. College of Creative Studies. Uh, Layla, can you give me the prompt again? What was the question? Yes. Um, what advice would you give someone going through the transfer process? Definitely reach out to us as early as possible. Uh, the important thing is that we're able to create a pathway for you that works. We want to see what credits that you've taken already uh, that makes sense to transfer right away, to look at your GPA, because that's tied to scholarship or if you should continue to take additional classes. Uh, what classes are you taking? Are they classes that uh, will transfer? Um, or have you taken in excess of the liberal arts courses that we require? Because we're predominantly a Bachelor of Fine Art degree, which means that out of 127 credit hours, uh, 78 of those are studios. So two thirds of your entire curriculum is studio based. So we wanna make sure that again, you haven't gotten ahead of yourself and that, that your timing for transferring uh, is appropriate. 
and you know we want to ensure as smooth the transition of transfer for you as we can. Uh, you certainly don't want to pop up in May and start the uh, transfer process. Uh, we want to make sure that you get a transfer credit evaluation, that you've gotten your merit scholarship award, your financial aid, so that you have all the information you need to make an informed decision, you know, whether, you know, CCS is the right fit and it's going to work for you. Uh, in which case we can get your file over to your academic advisor who will prepare your schedule so you get priority scheduling. We do have campus housing, which I didn't get a chance to mention. I'm so sorry. I thought I had more time to get more information out. Um, so uh, for those of you interested on campus housing, it is limited. So again, another reason to apply early. Thank you. Flashpoint? Yeah, um, I'll keep it pretty simple. Talk to current students at the schools that you're interested in. Um, you know, we are uh, much like we said earlier, you know, we love our schools. We love who we work for. We love who what we represent. Um, but I think that current students, you know, when you're talking to uh, an admissions counselor, have them hook you up with a, you know, student government association member or mentor that they might have on campus. Because current students are always going to be the most unfiltered uh, and the most honest about the pros and cons um, of their situation and their choice that they make. So yeah, that's what who I would reach out to and that's who I would talk to. They're gonna be the, your best bet. Not that you can't speak to us, but <laughs> they're also good to speak to. And before I skip to, I'm realizing that we still have one more presentation, correct? Yes. Okay, I am so sorry. We're out of order here tonight because we're missing someone. So I'm just going to uh, have us switch back here to presentation mode and we'll have the School uh, of Art Institute uh, Chicago go next. And you can go ahead and take over your screen. Great. So hi everyone, thanks for being here tonight. I'm Siobhan Lombardi, I'm Associate Director of Undergraduate Admissions for the School of the Art Institute of Chicago. And I work specifically and only with transfer students. So students who are thinking of transferring from a two-year, four-year college or who may have a prior degree and are thinking of a change in their career path. So one of the things that's unique about SAIC is our location. We are in downtown Chicago. We're largely a vertical campus and we're right in the center of the business and cultural hub of the city. So you have access to the hustle and bustle of the city, but you also have very close access to Chicago's lakefront with its hiking trails and bike trails and beaches. Um, all the museums and art galleries were right next to the center of public transportation. So you can get to one of any of Chicago's diverse neighborhoods and all that the city has to offer. So really great setting where you get that combination of green space and urban atmosphere in a campus. Here you see a picture of the Art Institute of Chicago, the museum, and that's a, another unique feature of SAIC. So the museum, which is, um, the third largest possesses the third largest collection in the world behind the Louvre and the Met is part of the campus. Students have free access to it. And you'll have many of your art history classes here. You can cut through it when it's super cold outside. You can go see the visiting artists and lecturers, lecturers um, access its libraries and special collections, all as part of your educational experience. We're one of the oldest independent art and design schools in the country. We are fully nationally and regionally accredited. Um, and we possess great outcomes for our students. Access to the museum and being the largest museum school campus in the country is one of the reasons we think that US News and World Report selected us as number two among art and design schools in the United States this year. And we're very proud of that. So what's you, what else is unique about SAIC? Well, first of all is our interdisciplinary curriculum. So there are no majors. We want students to be able to explore all the ways of making that they think informs their own practice. Now it's not willy nilly, there is an academic spine. So you start with contemporary practices, you proceed through professional practices, which which encompasses whatever your field is. So it's gonna look different for a painting and drawing person than it is for an architecture person, but it approaches all the best 
practices for you and your chosen area or discipline. Um, we find this interdisciplinary curriculum allows students to really explore and expand their own practice and think about ideas they may not have thought about for their own creative practice before. Um, we have a liberal arts-based curriculum, so we believe that meaning equals making. And for our students, um, it only, again, enhances their creative practice. So there are classes in social sciences, natural sciences, humanities, liberal arts electives, college level English composition. We also have critique based assessment. So no grades at SAIC. We operate on a credit non credit system. So this is not pass fail. It's more rigorous than that. And it entails um, your open discussion with your faculty, your peers, your classmates, so that you can take risks, you can fail, you can bring things back to the studio and come back to critique and discuss the changes you made, why you made them. And this goes across our liberal arts classes too. So you'll be creating multiple drafts, you'll be doing experience, you'll be changing ideas and bringing them back to your professors and your peers and discussing them and approaching them differently. You know, art is subjective. You wouldn't walk through a museum and look at a Picasso and say, I'd give that a C. And we don't do that with you. We consider you citizen artists and we're really interested in why you make the things that you make. Our faculty are all experts working in their field today. They're exhibiting artists, they're public, published authors, um, they're working architects. So we they bring hands-on experience of their, their professional life into the studio for you to learn what is going on in the art and design world today. And then we have an immersive studio classroom. So you will meet for your studio classes for six hours once a week. So nine to four or twice in the evening from six to nine. And this is to mimic the hours you'll be working when you have graduated from school and you're really hunkering down and working on your own practice. I know I'm a painter, it can take me 45 minutes to set up my palette. So we like you to be able to really sit down and think about what you're working on and how you're working on it. Now, as I said, we have no majors, um, but we do have five different degrees. So there's the BFA in studio, which encompasses all the fields of art and design. We have the Bachelor of Fine Arts with an emphasis in writing. This is not only traditional forms of writing, such as poetry, prose, and nonfiction, but also experimental writing, looking at the written word or published book as an artifact. The BFA in art education certifies you to teach K through 12 across the country. It's just a matter of licensing in your own state or wherever you're choosing to teach. And you do your student teaching at the Chicago Public Schools. Then we have two BA degrees, art history, which contextualizes the past, what has happened before, making it relevant for today. And the BA in visual and critical studies, which is the intersection of art and society. So if you're thinking of founding or working for a cultural organization, working for the government, setting arts policy, um, running a gallery, this is the degree you'd wanna pursue for that. So these are our areas of study, architecture, interior architecture, designed objects, um, arts administration and policy, art education and art history, which I've already discussed. Art and technology studies. So using not only technology to make your work, but use, having technology be the end product of your work. Ceramics, you know, old school and new. If you like hand, wheel throwing and hand building, great. We also have a kiln the size of a studio apartment so you can create large strategies in clay. Fashion design, which is couture and costuming, really focusing on tailoring and construction. Fiber and material studies, you know, again, old and new, hand weaving with old wooden looms or creating a fabric design and printing it on our digital jacquard printer. Then there's film, video, new media and animation, all things moving image, both old school and new school. Um, I talked about our liberal arts. Painting and drawing remains our largest and oldest department and both such alums as Georgia O'Keeffe and Grant Wood. Um, performance, using your body as your, your, or a body of others as your medium. So I am going to skip ahead to the end. I, want, I hope you'll contact us about, um, contact me about, more information about transferring to SAIC. Boy, time went fast. But take a screenshot of this and feel free to reach out at any time. Everyone has already said, you know, we're here for you. Don't be afraid of your admissions counselor and reach out to me at any time.
Thank you. Thank you so much. And sorry uh, about skipping you there. Uh, glad you were able to get in a piece of advice there for people in the college search. I just wanted to then jump back into our Q&A and have everyone answer the question, what is your favorite event or tradition on campus? I can start here. Um, at Illinois State University, I think a lot of people's favorite and my personal favorite event on our campus is Festival ISU. We have this big festival with all of our clubs. We have over 450 student clubs, including Transfer Redbirds and Tau Sigma, which, are, which is our Transfer Student Honor Society, um, out on our quad and the second Thursday of class. And all of our students get to walk around and talk to them, figure out which clubs they want to be a part of, which clubs they want to join. That's probably uh, my favorite tradition that we have at ISU. Uh, I would say uh, March Madness, I'm sorry, not March Madness, Late Night Madness, which kind of corresponds a little bit um, with, with our basketball homecoming. And so we've got, you know, vendors and sponsors and things that'll come in. And so students just come and pack out the gym and we have free food and there's like dunk contests, three point shooting competitions, all kinds of giveaways and things. Um, so we eat well, we laugh well, we dance, we have a really good time. Uh, and I would say that's what it is uh, over at Purdue Northwest. College of Creative Studies. Yeah, um, I actually work remotely, so I'm not on campus that often. But one of the uh, activities that I did participate in is uh, during finals week, we have a midnight breakfast. And I'm all about the food. Uh, so we, we feed our students uh, at midnight, keep you going uh, so that uh, you're ready to tackle your uh, class projects and get them in on time. Uh, there, there's a ton to do in Detroit, and we have a ton of student activities. Uh, so again, uh, I would be happy anybody who is interested to run you through the website where you can uh, find some of the student activities, clubs, and organizations that you might be interested in. I thought you were going to ask about fun facts. I got a couple of fun facts. That's the next slide. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, and we're running out of time, so I don't know if we're going to get to that. <laughs> So and I'll just add um, nope, favorite tradition of SAIC is just uh, seeing uh, particularly this time each year and they're happening digitally right or virtually right now, but um, at least for the public, but the student exhibitions and thesis projects that take place throughout the school. So there's the fashion show, there are performances, there are films of the Gene Sisko Film Center. There are the BFA exhibitions are going on right now and in about a month's time, the MFA exhibitions will start. So it's amazing to see the work of students we've recruited as they come in and see how their work changes and what they've done during their career at SAIC. Thank you. Um, cool. Yeah, one of my favorites um, is our, a lot of festivals, guys. Uh, one of my favorites is the uh, New Optics Film Festival that we do at our California campus and our Sight and Sound Digital Media Arts Festival that we do at our Chicago campus. I'm biased. I'm the director of them. Um, but I just get to see amazing student work, um, both from our current students as well as we bring in high school students to show um, their film or design or animation work. Um, so it's really cool. These students get opportunities to have some pretty serious industry experts and professionals come and view their work. Um, and they get to win and compete for cool stuff. So yeah, I'm looking forward, we're hosting it virtually this year, um, but it will be fun to eventually go back and do our festival like normal. Excuse my dog. Okay, if everyone is able to give a fun fact in about less, than, like we have a minute, I can get everyone to give a fun fact. So starting with Illinois State, do you have a fun fact? Yes, uh, we have one of only two collegiate circuses in the United States and we are the oldest. Okay, Purdue. Uh, we have the uh, only uh, varsity esports team uh, in our state. So super excited about that. College for Creative Studies. Well, it's not about the institution itself, but Detroit is one of the only places in the continental US where Canada is south of Detroit. Speaking of South Detroit, if you know the Journey song that references south of Detroit, there is no south of Detroit. That's the Detroit River. Okay, uh, School of Art, uh, School of the Art Institute of Chicago. 
So the museum was actually founded for the school. The school came first and the museum was founded with only copies of great masterworks for students to study in the academy style. It only later became a collecting museum. Okay, and Flashpoint. Uh, yeah, this year we're very excited. One of our alumni from 2017, Cheyenne Tan, won a um, Oscar or was a part of an Oscar for a short film documentary that she made. Um, so we're pretty excited about that. Thank you all, everyone. You met that challenge. We're right on time here to close things off. Um, thank you all uh, for being here. Thank you to all of our panelists. Uh, when this window closes, there'll be a quick uh, four question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback that you can provide. Also, this is just one of many sessions being hosted. So, um, you know, please sign up for more and you can find this recording in about a week and a lot of other recordings at strivescan.com backslash Illinois. And with that, everyone have a wonderful evening. And again, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Bye.